Personally, I've been waiting to make this video for at least the last six months, and this is where the rubber meets the road, and we are no longer duped by numbers and marketing materials. Let's find out if it's necessary to buy the i7-1165 G7 or stick with the i5 variant, the i5-1135 G7, and save some cash. Let's get rocking! <laughs> If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If at any point during this video, you're thinking, man, this guy's just bringing me some value, then ever so gently press down on that like button. That always helps out the channel and keeps these videos going out to help more creative professionals like yourself. Let's cut right to the chase so I can get you the info you need as soon as possible. The two laptops that I am using to conduct these tests have the exact same specs outside of the form factor. For the i7-1165 G7, we have the ProBook 630G8. And this comes with four cores and eight threads, of course, with the Intel Iris XE graphics, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and 512 gig SSD. Now, for the i5-1135 G7, we have the ProBook 450 G8. And this comes with, of course, four cores and eight threads, the Intel Iris XE graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, and the 512 gig SSD. So we're going to check out the simulated benchmarks, and then, according to the results, discuss what we have seen and make some recommendations depending on whether you are a graphic designer, photo editor, video editor, and more. Okay, so let's jump right into these. Kicking things off, we're going to look at simulated benchmark tools to check out how each of these laptops handles Cinebench and Geekbench. This is going to be interesting because both CPUs have the same cores, threads, TDP, and similar clock speeds. Right off the bat, we see the i7-1165 G7 barely edging out the i5-1135 G7 in the initial tests. So that means if you're only looking at simulated benchmarks, you will get roughly a 4.5% increase in performance by choosing the i7. Getting out of the simulated benchmark tests and onto some real world apps, let's take a look at how well each of these CPUs will perform in Adobe's design suite by benchmarking them with the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. Both perform well in their category of mid-range price point laptops. And regarding the points scored, the 1165 G7, it's the i7 model, actually falls behind. This is not earth shattering, but I was shocked to see this on the benchmark scores, being that one would expect the quote beefier i7 to win out against its little brother. The i7 1165 G7 scored a 505, under the i5-1135 G7, which scored a 545. All right, now let's get into some video editing tests to see how well each of these laptops handle video editing. First, I'm gonna start off with a playback test. So for this test, I'm gonna be using a nine minute 1080p clip, add some motion graphics, and then play it back in the timeline at full quality. This full clip contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. Now, during this test, the ProBook 450 saw drop frame rates as follows, and this is the one with the i5 processor. At full quality, 164 drop frames. At half quality, two drop frames, and at fourth quality, zero drop frames. Now, for the i7, 1165 G7, this is the ProBook 630, we saw drop frame rates as follows. At full quality, four drop frames. At half quality, zero drop frames. And at fourth quality, zero drop frames. For video editing, the battle is tight once again with the upper hand in playback going to the i7-1165 G7. Now let's look at some export times. For the i7-1165 G7, it was able to export that Premiere Pro 1080p to 1080p in one minute and 58 seconds. For the ProBook 450 with the i5 processor, it took one second longer at one minute and 59 seconds. Now for DaVinci Resolve, we're seeing uh, the export times increase quite dramatically 
And this is because I do have the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And so these scores will be a little bit higher than if you had the paid version. But if you notice the ProBook 630 with the i7 processor took 10 minutes and 27 seconds. And the ProBook 450 with the i5 took only about 30 seconds longer at 10 minutes and 59 seconds. So what's happening here? Well, the i7 has more cache and a larger integrated GPU, and these two elements in the unit need more power. So that means that the i5 is actually a more efficient CPU and will be able to hit higher frequencies. That is why we saw the i5 beat out the i7 in Photoshop as it is a more CPU intensive app. Whereas in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, the GPU is utilized more. And because the i7 has the slightly beefier integrated graphics, it is able to get slightly better performance in those applications. Now regarding the thermal performance and noise, if you're looking for a cooler and quieter CPU, I would lean you towards the i5 1135G7 as it does run both cooler and quieter during my tests. During web browsing, the i5 got up to about 35 decibels, whereas the i7 was at about 37 to 40 decibels. During the Photoshop benchmark, the i5 was at about 37 decibels of noise, whereas the i7 was at about 40 decibels of fan noise to keep it cool. Now, for both video editing exports during the Photoshop benchmark, for the i5, we saw about 40 decibels of noise coming out of the machine, and for the i7, about 47 decibels to keep the machine cool. Now, regarding the thermal performance, here are the charts for you to check that out. As you'll see, the i5 does run cooler. If you're a video editor that doesn't mind a little extra warmth and noise, I would pick up the i7 1165G7 equipped laptop as it is slightly smoother in the timeline while 1080p video editing and by slightly, I truly mean slightly faster in the export times. But overall, choosing to go with the i5 1135G7 is just as suitable for designers, photo editors, digital artists, and video editors working in 1080p, of course. Are you surprised? Honestly? I was pretty surprised. I was hopeful that the i7 would give us a little better performance because it is a little bit more expensive. Now, the laptops that I use for these tests are the HP ProBooks. I really like them. They're great laptops, thin, light, excellent form factor, um, good performance. So if you're curious about those models, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Now, remember, if you do make a purchase of those links, it will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want more videos just like this, you can click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video. By the way, I got my hair cut. Good, bad, equal, let me know.